Welcome back to the channel. I spent my entire week behind the wheel of this 2024 Ford Mustang GT. The Mustang is truly one of, if not the last of its kind, as the Charger, the Challenger, and even the Camaro have all been gone, some replaced by electric vehicles, some not being replaced at all. Ford has a unique situation. They can kind of copy the Camaro. This Mustang kind of has Camaro vibes to me. You can see it's got wider hips, different things like that. And who cares if they copy the competition at this point because they are the only ones truly making muscle cars nowadays. So today I'm gonna to take you through the exterior, then the interior, and of course, a POV drive. Let's get right into it. So as usual, getting right into it here, we're gonna start off with the front end. We have these really nice daytime running LEDs with the sequential headlights, and we have a nice little animation because I do have the GT Premium package. Now we do have a whole bunch of intakes here, a dark front grille with like kind of like a piano black, which I do think looks really nice. And then our blacked out pony right there, very cool. And then also on the hood here, we have a nice vent that is real. Overall, the front of the Mustang never gets old for any reason. I mean, whether you go seventh gen or really any gen, the Mustang has been really, really nice looking throughout the years. And I mean, here in 2024, it is very nice. If you like the paint color, however, it does not come in yellow for 2025. So if you want to get this paint color, you got to act now and get it in 2024. Let me tell you what's powering my Mustang GT this week. I've got a five liter naturally aspirated Coyote V8 giving me 480 horsepower, 415 pound feet of torque. Or if you have the performance exhaust, so the variable one, which I do have here, I've got 486 horsepower, 418 pound feet of torque. And of course, it's a rear wheel drive with a six speed manual transmission, which makes it that much better. So now we move on to the side. This is where I'm saying, like you can see the hips remind me a lot of a Camaro. Actually, this color with the blacked out rims reminds me straight up of Bumblebee, but who cares? Bumblebee doesn't exist anymore because Chevrolet stopped making it. And here we are, we've got the Ford. Now, I usually am not a fan of blacked out rims, but for this kind of body setup, I will take it. This side profile here looks phenomenal. Every piece of this car looks phenomenal, but let's get kind of close here. So let's get close first with these nice rims that are blacked out. I've got Brembo and they say Mustang and they're gray. So that's a nice touch too. I've got the 5.0 badge telling us that we have a big five liter in there. Nice gloss black mirror caps there as well as nice turn signal LEDs. It'll unlock and lock as I walk and, and walk up and walk away. That's a very nice feature. The gas cap is there like it always has been. A very low ride height but a very cool ride height at the same time. Okay, last but not least, we have the back for the Mustang GT. You can see it's kind of more of a triangle shape nowadays. Like it's, you know, it's very 90 degree angle, but I actually like the look of it. And then if I bend a little bit lower here, you can see I've got the quad exhausts. Again, you can see the ground clearance, the ride height and everything in between, but those lights in kind of like a darker setting really do shine and they do not flash in real life. That's just the camera doing it. But I really, really enjoy this rear end here. It looks super clean, super aggressive as well and sounds phenomenal, of course. <laughs> got a slight little rear wing it's I mean it's hard to call it a rear wing but I mean it is there and I like the fact that it's black and not paint match I think it kind of adds a little bit also just by the wheel here we do have some lights there as well nice little touch and last but not least I'll show you the trunk it doesn't automatically open like pop open you gotta kind of pull it and then look I have my baby seat in here but I will include some shots for you with the the trunk kind of empty so you can see how much it is but i can fit a full stroller in here and a full seat in here and we've also got a subwoofer right back here so very good news so it's going to do it for our exterior tour let's hop on the inside because there's way more to go over in there and then of course pov drive coming right after that all right so first up is the interior usually it's the rear but i can kind of kill uh, two birds with one stone if you will here so i'll show you the rear it's doing that because my lights are on uh, so here we go. Let's just pull this guy forward. So that guy's gonna pull forward You can see I just basically use it for storage But somebody who does fit back there is my kid I managed to like jerry-rig the the mirror, but I definitely did not jerry-rig the seat I'm using the tie down points provided in the seat and it works really well for the baby because she doesn't really have any head restraints Or she's kind of in her own thing. So it actually works I mean my wife doesn't have that much room when we do take it, but if we all want to go in the Mustang it works. Uh, as for a real human like myself, or like a fully sized human like myself, I don't fit there. If I didn't have any arms or legs and just a head, it would probably be fine, but yeah, 
not a lot of headroom back there. So I'm not going to really try to fit myself back there. It's a cool bucket seat, and I like the design of it, but that is as far as I'm going to go with it. <laughs> so let me fold this guy forward. Let's hop into the front seat. Very nice, greeted by this very nice steering wheel. I'll show you the startup since I am a manual. We're in neutral, clutch in, brake, and a little start up there. And there's no way you can't hear that, and I'm in like normal mode. I don't have quiet start on because why would you? So everything loads up, takes, takes a little bit of time to load that infotainment display up, but since I have the premium package, I've got one flush screen here not the two screens that you would see in some of them, so that's very nice. So let's start off by taking you through the steering wheel. A bunch of physical buttons here on the steering wheel. I like kind of like the, the leather wrap and like the kind of different materials that we have here, kind of like this plasticky kind of carbon fiber looking thing. Like that, it's not carbon fiber, but it kind of looks like it a little bit to me. Then I've got all my volume controls. I can kind of change my steering modes on the fly here if I want to. Um, which is good and then I can control my gauge cluster there as well I'll take you through the themes in just a second I've got adaptive cruise control lane keep assist all the stuff right here and then this is how you're going to switch through your drive modes so that's going to be useful I'll show you that too then I've got my illumination controls my trunk button I've got three memory seat settings which is interesting and cool to see not a lot of crazy stuff going on on the door there so I mean the this lights up at nighttime and stuff like that but nothing crazy happening so but standard, that's not really where you're gonna focus your attention anyways. I like the little pony here, very nice. Nothing written down there, no, it's all good. I've got three pedals you can see, very cool. And then we come to our digital gauge cluster, which I have in track mode pretty much all the time. That's the theme that I like to use. I think it gives me everything I want and makes me feel like, uh, you know, like I'm driving a race car all the time. But I can have a bunch of different ones, so I'll show you them. So here is the normal. Very basic, very cool. And then sport, a little bit more complex. And then we got track, that's the one that I use all the time. We've got a calm one, which is uh, boring. And then we've also got really cool ones. So I've got the classic 67, 68 Mustang, very cool. And then we have the Fox body Mustang, so 87 and 93. Very cool. And then I've got the SVT Cobra from 99 to 01. So if you're like a fan of classic Mustangs, you can have either one of these things. And these do look really cool for the dials. So on over to our infotainment display, since I've been talking about it, it's very basic. It's slow as you would expect a Ford to be, if that makes sense. The processing power isn't quite there. I've had a couple of little like audio gremlins too, a little bit where I've actually had to reboot the entire system, but that's pretty much it. Nothing crazy, crazy. Obviously you don't want to have to reboot the system ever, uh, but the reboot did fix it. So that's good. Cause sometimes I've had it where that doesn't happen. Uh, you know, you can control your settings. I've got navigation in here, wireless Apple CarPlay, wireless Android auto, both are there. So that's good. Um, and I can also control, if I click my little Mustang button down here, I can control what it is. I don't know if this is, yeah, this is a picture of the, sort of, I mean, I don't have the wing or anything. It don't look like that, uh, but you can control your active exhaust. Like I said, I got sport, I've got a track, I've got a quiet, don't know why you put it in that one. I've got different track apps here with the acceleration timer, brake performance, lap timer, launch settings, all the stuff that you would need to race this thing. And we've also got la launch control and a line lock and our rev match button, which I like to keep on. Then you can see your auxiliary gauges if you want. You've got a couple of different screens for that if you're kind of going on the track. And then we have custom profile. So I have one through six of custom profiles and you can kind of change everything there is. You choose a base drive mode, so sport. But if you do that, if you choose sport, for example, I'm kind of locked the steering in sport plus. I can only kind of change what that does. So that's kind of interesting, but I can configure it to have like a quiet mode. So I don't want to wake up my baby or anything like that. Then we can have display lighting and then we can have ambient lighting colors, which is really cool. I think that's, uh, it's nice to see. So you can kind of play around with that. I've kind of just left it the way it was. And then this is something that's not going to be so good for a lot of people that like buttons or knobs. I have no, I have dual zone automatic climate control, but there's no way to control it. Uh, from here other than the max defrost button right there. For everything else, you've got to kind of click this for your temperature and then click this for your, you know, your fan speed. If it's an auto, then it doesn't matter. And then this for where the air comes from. So like you see, it's a bunch of different buttons for basically the same function. It's all laid out right there and easy to use. Like I said, I got heated seats, heated steering. So that's not bad, no ventilation, but honestly, you don't care about that in this. I don't know, don't know if you'll use this in the winter. Personally, I don't know if I would, but you probably could if you don't do that much driving. But I mean, look, 
the infotainment works well and i think it's fine for what it is and and fine for what i need it to be but you're gonna miss your buttons if you're a buttons person personally though the drive makes up for it the drive makes up for every shortcoming that this car has so there's that i've got two nice vents as well i like the little difference of materials leather i like this plastic kind of material here then i can have like favorite buttons and stuff like that volume knob which is manual start stuff button in red which i like usb c and usb a as well as a wireless charging port so that's very good to see here i've also got the six speed manual transmission shifter which has got really short throws really easy to understand very easy to use and we've got the rear lockout which is nice since i don't have the performance pack i don't get like the fake handbrake so i just get the standard electronic one which that's what it is anyway so that's completely fine then i've got two cup holders right here and the seats are very nice and sporty they're sporty but like grand tory if you if that makes sense like i could do a long road trip in them but they would also hold up on the track or on the drag strip pretty well so that's good news too but i'll talk a little bit more about seat comfort and everything in between once we get this thing on the road so let's do exactly that all right on the road now with the mustang gt in this wonderful yellow color well, there's the, there's not a lot of people out here in the wild uh definitely turn heads for more than you know one reason because i'm yellow uh, and i sound like a monster this thing like and that's first gear like i'm getting up to like the speed limit in first gear like let that sink in a lot of the cars that i've been able to show you this month alone here in august have not been able to do that you know in first gear at all so this thing has plenty of power from a v8 it's super fast pulls like a freight train which hopefully i'll be able to show you without getting myself in too much trouble we're going to do the speed limit but we're going to do the speed limit quickly is what i like to say and if i get stopped that's exactly what i'm going to say but yeah so like it's been it's been an easy car to live with as well like also it's just fun like i'm just itching to drive this thing and like yeah i think that's probably the same way that a lot of owners feel is they're also probably itching to drive this which is why you know you whenever you see a mustang you always see the same mustang all the time because the guy's out all the time driving it right so yeah let's uh i'm already in sport mode that's pretty much how i drive all the time so let's give her some beams here go from second gear and just rip oh my god that's that's like way more speed than you ever need i don't even need to explore the end of third gear there and i hope you i mean there's no way you didn't hear that monster coming out the back of this thing i mean it sounds like a mid-engine vehicle it's so loud it feels like the engine's right behind me but that exhaust is doing all of the work oh my goodness and like look i'm like at highway speeds in third gear i can basically drive on the highway like this and just like maybe get into fourth but like the end of third gear i don't even know where it is also the end of second gear i didn't even need to get close to the red line there because like i don't know i think i'd get arrested if if <laughs> driving on the public roads end of second gear would probably get me arrested right here that's how quick this thing is like i i, I don't know like, i've driven the z that was like pretty quick too and and but i was able to get to the end of second before having you know before like being like okay i better stop i'm gonna get in trouble if there's a if there's a cop on the other side no no not in the mustang and even in third gear like I, i'm going up to 4,000 rpm and i'm not even close and i'm like going way faster than you would ever need to in third gear oh my god when it's when i say muscle this is like a bodybuilder this thing this thing like competes you know oh my god this thing's got fine-tuned muscle uh and i i love it like say what you will about mustang sure they love a crowd maybe their drivers love a crowd but if you're responsible if you take it easy you know they'll do anything crazy i mean you're not gonna you're not gonna end up in you know you know in somebody's legs you're just gonna be fine and like i'm i've been driving in the rain i've been driving the wet i really haven't slipped really at all other than like when i really put the power down you know to the amount that i really can't show on camera then okay you can say like you know the car kind of snaps away a little bit and then the mustang if there was a crowd there would have went right for it but still like you know it takes a lot for the car to do that you really have to have your traction control off like oh you have to do all the stuff you maybe shouldn't do in one of these vehicles with with that amount of power right like you just should probably relax a little bit um but yeah this thing like maybe it's not so good on gas because i've been doing a lot of city driving so 17.5 liters per 100 kilometers is my average right now though 
I'm at 13.1 liters per 100 kilometer just in this trip and I've been maybe driving for like 25 minutes, 30 minutes, so pretty good and I've been not taking it easy on this thing at all. Also, rev match downshifting makes you feel like an absolute champion. Look at this, I can do it at going 62 and I only go to like 3,000 RPM. Ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous. I don't even know it needs to go to the end of first gear. Oh my God, that's terrifying. That is absolutely unreal. I am so quick. It's got so much power. I'm like afraid, oh my God. It scares me when I push it all the way to the floor because like, it's just so much power. Like direct when you want it. Oh my God, EVs can do that, but I mean, try to have that V8 sound. I, I dare an EV to do that, man. Oh man, it doesn't get old. I love this thing. Muscle, 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 muscle. <laughs> Oh man, does this make you feel really cool? And of course, it's starting to rain when I film, but that's okay. It's uh, a little downpour here. It's been like it's been crappy weather. That's the only unfortunate thing about me driving the Mustang. Like at this time of year, it's like the weather starts to just deteriorate, and we start to get like rain, then not rain, then rain, then not rain. So it's like it's a little bit annoying. Uh, but I don't care. Honestly, I would drive this thing any time of the year. I think it would be okay in the winter. It's just a lot of power for the winter. You know, like I don't know. I feel like if if you have the disposable income and you want to enjoy one of these maybe get something all-wheel drive for the Quebec winters, but you probably, it probably would survive. If you put a set of good winter tires on, the rear wheel, the rear wheel tires should hold on, especially if you don't do that much driving. You got a good set of tires for when you need to be out. It should be okay, but usually around my area, I don't see that many Mustangs, and that's probably for a reason. So other than just pure performance and pure like joy that you get for it, I mean, like I said, it's very comfortable. It's very like Grand Tory. Like the seats that I have aren't like, they're not like racing seats per se. So they don't bother me like long-term. So I've been, like I said, I've been driving for a little bit today, pretty much off and on, but it's like my back is not hurting. Like I don't feel like, you know, the, the lumbar is not good. Nothing like that's bothering me. So that's good news. Um, I think I could definitely do a longer road trip because we have our adaptive cruise, we have our lane keep, we have everything that you would need or want to be able to do like a longer road trip of this thing. So that's also good. Oh man, it's ridiculous. And like, I basically can city drive in second gear. That's that's how much power I have in this, this Mustang. Oh man. I mean, it just rips, it just rips. And it holds pretty well, despite being a rear wheel drive, despite being like a little, like when I really send it into corners, it's a little loosey. Like I can kind of feel like, ooh, you wanna go, especially in the rain. So I'd be careful when it really starts to come down. But uh, we, hey, this thing's ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. So another thing is like infotainment wise has been okay, like after, like I said, I've had a little bit of lagginess and stuff like that. So like, it's been fine so far since I've reset it. Like I said, in my, when we were taking a look at the interior, I have reset it, it's okay. Uh, but also something that like kind of scares me long-term, like if, would that be something that I have to take it to Ford to like kind of reset? So if you own this vehicle, let me know how the software has held up. Also, also just tell us generally how the engine is held up. Cause you know, you know, the stupid stereotypes about Ford and like found on roadside debt, like all that garbage, whatever horror stories. You know, there's some people that I know that have had a Mustang forever. And you know, the only problems that they've had are caused by themselves, not really, you know, it's not really a Ford problem. They tried to mod something, it didn't work, so they broke everything. And it's like, okay, well, that's not Ford's problem per se. Maybe it's Ford's problem for not being easy to mod, but I, honestly, if I were to own this thing, I would not do a single thing to it. Not a single thing. I think stock, this thing has enough to keep a smile on my face for five years or more than that. It's just classic, it's iconic, and it's it's uncertain, the future of, of of the Mustang. I'm not sure if Ford's going to follow suit. I think maybe Ford are waiting to see how that new Challenger does electric wise. If it sells like crazy, I think we are going to say goodbye to the Mustang in the near future. If it bombs and nobody buys it, 
then maybe we'll still see a V8 Mustang for a couple more years to come. But you got to get them while they last, right? Because I think I think that's the way that things are eventually going to go. And I think that electrification kind of is an inevitable outcome for the Mustang. So, yeah. I love this thing, though. I hope you enjoyed watching this thing because I have enjoyed driving this thing for you. Even when I'm going slow and I'm stuck behind somebody, like, if I want to hear the engine, I can just... You know, and we can just, it just rips. There's almost no delay. It's naturally aspirated. It's wild, wild, wild. It is a wild horse if I've ever seen one. It's a wild horse if I've ever driven one. And I, you know, as it starts to rain here, we're going to end things off. So let me know what you think of the Mustang. Let me know, would you buy one? Do you already own one? And how do you like it? Let me know, like, ownership experience, reliability, everything in between. I want to know it all. So let me know what you think in the comments. Make sure you subscribe if you want to see more vehicles like this. I can't get the opportunities if you don't watch, but I do have this opportunity because you have watched. So thank you very, very much for trusting me and putting me in this position because I'm in this position because you watch my videos, even if you only watch two minutes or even if you watch only the parts where I rip the vehicles on that straight. Whatever you're doing, thank you for watching anyways. Make sure you like, subscribe. I'll see you in the next week. See you in the next car. Take care.